With the Plasmic REST API fetcher component, you can fetch and use data from any REST endpoint in your Plasmic application. Let me show you how. First, let's add the REST API fetcher package to the project. So I'll click on this button and go to component packages and search for REST. So let's add this to the project. Great. By default, if you look at the URL here, you see that it queries the GitHub uh, API endpoint to fetch some Plasmic repositories. But let's edit that uh, to use a different endpoint of our own. This one fetches dummy products. So let's save that and that's done. Okay, now that we have data in our project coming from the endpoint that we've provided, how do we display this data and show them to our users? It's simple. Any elements we add inside of the data fetcher components will have access to any data that we fetched from that endpoint. So for instance, let me uh, add a vertical stack here. And this vertical stack is going to uh, have access to the data that we fetched inside of this component. And to just show you that that's possible is I'm going to repeat this uh, vertical stack with respect to the data that we fetched. So if I select the collection, I'll set, set it to the fetched data, which will give us access to the 30 product items that we fetched from that endpoint. And if I save that, uh, the stacks are going to repeat with respect to that data. Great. Um, so the next thing I want to do is maybe j let's just add an image element here and uh, use dynamic values to set the, the image to be the thumbnail of the products that we fetched. If I save this, I should now see all 30 product images showing up exactly as expected. Great. Uh, but this doesn't look really cool. So let me, uh, let me change the grid layout to use four columns. Mm, that's much better. Okay, something else we can do is we can add a text field here to just uh, maybe show the product, uh, the product title. Uh, so let's do that. Use dynamic values, current item and title. And now we have uh, the image and the title showing up as expected. Great. The next thing I want to show you is that you have as much flexibility with this endpoint as you would in any other project. Uh, so for instance, you can pass in queries to this endpoint to maybe limit the number of products that you can fetch or really for whatever reason that, that you might need it for. Uh, so if I come back to the REST API fetcher, I can come to the endpoint and pass in uh, query parameters here. So let's do limit for instance and set it to five, which would mean that we, we are only allowing this endpoint to fetch five products. So if I save that, uh, I should now see that our API gets updated and we see only five products. Great. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is probably my favorite, and that is that you can make nested API calls uh, inside of Plasmic using the, the REST API fetcher. And what I mean by that is uh, something like this, right? I have a function that fetches all of my products from this particular endpoint. And when I get all of those products, I can map to them. And for each of the products, I can call a different endpoint and pass in the ID of that product. Now, what I'm doing here is when I get uh, the, the products that are coming from this initial uh, API call, I get the IDs of those products. I use them to make a, a second API call with that ID to then fetch all the images that are related to each of the individual uh, products. Uh, this is very exciting for me because you can do pretty much the same thing inside of Plasmic using the, the REST API fetcher. And I want to show you how. Uh, Right here, uh, inside of this vertical stack that we've created, we can go ahead and add uh, the REST API feature again, the second time. And uh, this one, because it's currently inside of the previous one, it has access to the previous data that we fetched. So what we can do is we can update the endpoint that this one's calling dynamically uh, by selecting the current item and actually let's switch to code. And here I can concatenate this because I want to uh, fetch it from the same exact endpoint, but this time, um, let me paste this forward slash current item dot ID, which would give me access to the ID of the products that we fetched. So this is what our dynamic endpoint is going to look like. So if I save this, I now uh, see the second uh, REST API feature right here uh, with an updated uh, API URL. Great. So what I want to do now is use this second one 
and fetch the images that are related to each of these individual products. Uh, so what I want to do is, uh, first, let me add uh, a horizontal stack here because I want to display the images horizontally. So add a horizontal stack and inside of that stack, uh, let's add an image element. And this image element, we're going to repeat it based on the data that is coming from our second uh, API call. So the current item dot images, which is where we want to get uh, the images from. So I save that. I now see that I have all these individual images showing up. Great. Uh, so then what I want to do is dynamically set the value of the images from this current item, which then represents uh, the URLs of the different images that are related to this particular product. So if I save that, I should now see uh, all the product images that are related to different products showing up. Uh, let me just add a little bit of margin here. Yep. So this looks great. Uh, what is going on here is the first API call with the first uh, REST API fetcher, we're getting the product image and the product title. And then with the ID of the product that we fetched, we make a second API call to fetch all the images that are related to this individual uh, product. And like, and the same applies to all the other uh, five different products. Now, the disclaimer here is that in practice, you don't want to make the API calls like this. You can actually just repeat the image element and set the repeat collection to be the images array that is available to you from the first API call. So in that regard, the second API call that we're making here is really not necessary, but we are only doing it for demonstrative purposes and just to show you that you can make nested API calls inside of Plasmic using this fetcher component. Cool. Um, the last thing that I want to show you, uh, which was also something that I think is very cool, is that you have access to two different um, preview modes when you're working with the REST API feature in Plasmic. And that is the loading uh, state and the error state. What this means is if you want to customize the experience of your users when uh, your API is loading or when there's an error, you can totally do that. So if I toggle this on, we should see, uh, let me zoom in on it a little bit. We should see that we get a loading state show up on screen. And uh, if we toggle the error state on and toggle this one off, we should see that we have the error fetching data showing up. So these are all like slot items that you can populate with whatever data that you want to show here. Uh, so in the case of the error, error state, you can put a custom error page here. You can put whatever uh, you want to put here basically to, to kind of like improve the experience of your users. Uh, for the loading states, you can put a loading spinner uh, or an SVG or a loading screen or pretty much whatever you want to put here. Uh, so this gives you like added uh, functionalities to really make this project your own and customize the experiences as you see fit for your users. Okay, I know I said uh, lastly the last time, uh, but there's one more thing I'd like to show you and that is the REST API feature has some properties that you can customize uh, to improve the experiences you want to give to your users or basically to improve the things you want to do. So we have a couple of request methods that you can choose from uh, depending on the kind of API request you want to make. We also have the headers prop uh, that you can open up and edit it to your test. You can add more request headers, author authorization headers, uh, whatever else uh, you want to put in here that will help you make the API call a success. And lastly, we have the body where you can pass in a request body. If you're making a push request or a different kind of request that requires you to pass in a request body, uh, you can uh, set that up here save that and your request should go exactly as you'd expect. Uh, so that's it. That's how you work with the REST API data feature in Plasmic and I'll see you in the next lesson.